good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the uh, course of mechanics of fiber reinforced polymer composite structures and uh, today we will start module 1 and today is the first lecture. Uh, in module 1, uh, there will be two lectures and uh, basically what we will discuss in module 1 is uh, first even though the course is on actually uh, mechanics of fiber reinforced polymer composite structures, but uh, first we will try to understand what is a composite in general which is required for further understanding of the F fiber reinforced polymer composites and we will also see the classification types of FRB composites uh, as structural components and then we will try to understand the important terminologies which will be used throughout this course. Okay. So, in today's lecture first uh, mostly we will be uh, discussing on the in general what is a composite okay, and uh, what are its uh, use, uh, advantages and limitations and maybe in the second lecture in this model we will discuss different types of composites and, F, uh, and uh, FRP composites as well as different terminologies. So, to start with uh, uh, we know that the structural materials uh, basically are classified as metals, polymers, ceramics and composites. Okay. Now, uh, with the advancement of science and technology you know that there are the requirement of improved performance also increased okay and uh, so the perf the in the quest for uh, improving the performance of structural composites say for example uh, many in many aerospace applications we like to uh, use materials so that the weight is minimized okay then uh, in many load bearing applications we we like to uh, increase the strength that means we want higher strength materials. Of course, for each uh, for uh, all these cases we always like to minimize the cost. Now, in doing so uh, what happens is many of these uh, conventionally used materials are actually stretched to the limits that means there is hardly any scope of improvement. Okay. So, how to do this? So, there are two ways either uh, improve the traditional materials and in doing so we know that there are different types of alloys, plastics have come up like uh, we use alloying elements in steels to improve some of the properties okay. or if that does not work may be uh, a completely new material have to be thought of. This is here the composite material comes up I mean the composite materials is actually is an example of the latter category that is it comes under the new material. So, why composite materials have to come? in the quest of improving performance of structural components many of these conventional mat used materials are actually stressed to the limits and therefore, the composite materials has come up with a uh, with an uh, I mean objective of developing some new materials. So, that some of the performance could be improved. Okay. Therefore, with this background let us first define what exactly is composite. Okay. Composite is two or more materials or sometimes is also called phases which is taken from the first three categories. I mean we have already categorized the structural materials as four categories metal, polymers, ceramics and composites. So, two or more materials are actually taken from the first three categories combined on a macroscopic scale this is important that they are combined in macroscopic scale to form a useful material which when designed carefully is expected to provide the better qualities of its constituents. That means, two or more materials are mixed and combined macroscopically with an objective that it will give improved performances which uh, uh, none of the constituent materials could uh, provide uh, alone. Okay. One of these two phases is discontinuous, more stiff and stronger and is termed as reinforcement. And the other phase is continuous which is less stiff and weaker which is termed as matrix. Naturally, say uh, the why it is called reinforcement because it actually enhances the strength or stiffness when it is added to another material therefore, it is a reinforcement okay. it is a discontinuous phase. So, in, in uh, so what is a composite material now? Now, we understand we understood why a composite material had to be thought of and a composite material is actually two or more materials it is shown in this uh, schematic two or more materials combined 
on a macroscopic scale to have certain desired properties which is better than the individual constituent components and this is composite. Now, in alloy also we mix two or more uh, materials okay, say, say uh, alloy steels we, we, we use number of components to make an alloy. Of course, there also we, would, we, we, we do it with an objective of uh, getting certain desired properties, but then they are actually mixed in microscopic scale therefore, they are not termed as composite. Okay. Uh, this is important what is macroscopic and what is microscopic this is important like we can understand this with a simple example say uh, for example, if you take a composite suppose this is a composite. Say for example, all of you know the you know uh, the RCC beam okay, reinforced concrete. Okay. There are, there are st steel rods right mixed with concrete okay, aggregates. Okay. If you take a cross section, suppose we take a cross section, you can clearly see with naked eye that there are different constituents. We can see the rods which are different. We can see the rods which are the reinforcement and we can see the aggregates. Of course, the aggregates also are, are made of more materials like it consists of sand, cement and stone stones, but for the time being let us uh, assume that. Uh, that uh, the that there are the two constituents one is the reinforcement which are the rods and other is the uh, aggregates so if you take a cross section with naked eye we can actually clearly see the two distinct you know const faces okay on the other hand suppose if you consider an a bar made of alloy steel okay a bar made of alloy steel and take a cross section you cannot make out with naked eye that it actually consists of more than one material even though it consists of iron carbon you know manganese okay maybe vanadium so you cannot make out until unless we actually put it under microscopic microscope and then we can see the distinct faces differently therefore it's not a uh, composite the it has to be mixed in the macroscopic scale so one common example of uh, uh, composite is fiber reinforced composites you know the nowadays it is extensively used in aerospace applications where glass or carbon fibers are actually mixed with polymeric uh, matrix and they are used as a structural component. Okay. So, it actually looks like this there are large number of fibers and they are actually uh, mixed with polymer matrix many cases these are epoxy resins okay. and uh, so the two distinct faces are the fiber is the reinforcement and the, uh, the the polymer is a matrix okay now what do you mean by discontinuous and continuous if you can see here i mean i can enlarge this figure little bit suppose if you look at just only two fibers say i'm drawing just two fibers and rest is matrix okay so these fibers are discontinuous phase because you cannot reach from one fiber to another directly but this matrix is continuous you can reach from any point on the matrix to another point on the matrix therefore it is a continuous phase okay so we could understand what is composite the basic definition and we have also seen why an alloy is not termed as composite this is important okay to obtain a desirable characteristics and which is needed uh, to to perform the design requirement for some functional requirement say for example we want a component which should be very very strong at the same time it should be light. Now, as we know that the metals are generally dense compared to say polymers. Okay. Uh, therefore, uh, weight of met metals are much more compared to polymers, but at the same time they are far stronger compared to that of polymer. Okay. Now, could we actually mix say a metal maybe in the fiber form with a polymer to uh, obtain a material which is strong at the same time light. So, this is what we mean by uh, mixing or combining two materials macroscopically to obtain certain desirable characteristics. Second significance is second point is it should be macroscopic. I have already emphasized that the, the material should be two materials should be 
combined in macroscopic scale. That means, if you just look at the cross section of the of the composite material, you should be able to make out the we should be able to make out the constituents. That means, we, we should be able to we, we could see that one is the fiber, other is the matrix, okay, which is not possible like in alloys, okay, because they are not actually mixed at macroscopic scale, they are actually mixed or combined in the atomic or microscopic scale. Therefore, it is not possible to identify the constituents using you know just by visual inspection until unless you actually put it uh, under a electron microscope. Okay. Therefore, these are the characteristics of a composite material and then the properties of the uh, composite will be markedly different from that of its that of the constituents. Say for example, just now we have discussed say for example, uh, suppose the uh, a polymer matrix, okay, a polymer say kind of epoxy okay, is actually reinforced by say carbon fiber. So, the Young's modulus of polymer matrix is generally in the range of 3 to 5 giga Pascal. However, for uh, the Young's modulus of uh, you know the graphite fiber is of the order of 200 giga Pascal. Therefore, if we mix them at a certain you know uh, proportion say 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 40 percent graphite and 60 percent polymer, okay, then perhaps the uh, the Young's modulus of the this uh, uh, poly this composite this composite will be around 180 giga Pascal. So, there is a marked difference between the Young's modulus of the uh, you know Young's modulus of uh, the polymer and that of the final composite. On the other hand, suppose if you talk about an alloy, say addition of carbide in carbide steel hardly has the, the influence on the Young's modulus is insignificant. Okay. So, this is not the case in alloys, okay. on the other, but in, in case of composite there is a marked difference in the properties of the final composite and then there should be significant percentage of the constituent like, like suppose if we talk about a polymer matrix fiber composites say 40 percent fiber, 60 percent polymer matrix may be 30 percent fiber, 60 percent polymer matrix but the percentage is significant unlike say in case of a say alloy steel say there is 0.3 percent carbon okay there is say 0.04 percent of manganese like that okay point 8 percent of say uh, uh, sorry point 0.04 percent of manganese so the percentage of these elements are insignificant but on the other hand in a composite it, there is a significant percentage of the constituent material so therefore to summarize a composite will have actually a reinforcement phase which is generally the load bearing constituents okay and reinforcement materials are discontinuous okay uh, on the other hand uh, the the other phase the matrix actually acts as a binder in which the reinforcements are actually embedded and the matrix phase are continuous now the reinforcement could be of different shapes it could be fiber it may not be all as most of the times we talk about fiber composites the reinforcement may not be all as fiber it could be particles leading to what is known as particulate composite it could be flake leading to what is called flake composites okay so Having understood the definition of composite, that means when the uh, uh, in the quest of improving the properties, when it was not possible to achieve that through conventionally available monolithic materials, so uh, in the form of new materials, the composite materials have come up. Now, let us see the genesis. Are they really new? There have been traces of you know reinforcing mud walls of house with bamboo shoots. I think even if you now also if you go to villages, there are huts, you know where the walls are actually made of mud where there are bamboo shoots are present basically the bamboo shoots are the load bearing member members and the mud actually acts as a binder like the bamboo are the reinforcement and the mud is the matrix so that uh, this has been there in in bc okay before uh, it is that it has been there in bc and in the 19th and uh, and century there are examples of you know traces of laminated shorts used in wire Okay, made of uh, laminated metals by forging. Okay. Then in the 20th century, uh, in the mid, mid of the 20th century, first the fiberglass in resins are used for structural components, boats and aircraft components are made of fiberglass. Then in the latter part of the 20th century, actually the development of new fibers, modern fibers like carbon fibers, boron fibers, aramid fibers have come up. Then uh, new composite systems uh, with matrices made of metal 
as well as ceramics have been used in in the latter part of uh, 20th century okay leading to what is known as metal matrix composites and ceramic matrix composites very recently there are nano composites uh, where the nano fibers are used again the requirement is the nano fibers have much uh, are much stronger and stiffer compared to again so called conventional fibers therefore they provide uh, much better strength and stiffness to the composites in addition uh, there have been number of examples of natural uh, you know naturally available composites a very good example is bone uh, here i mean animal bone you know uh, this is actually made of organic collagen fibers which is made of protein and a small inorganic crystals water and fats so for example if you look at the femur of a human uh, femur uh, the outer cortical part outer one is the cortical which is having a strength of the order of ultimate strength of 40 to 150 mega pascal and with a young's modulus of 20 giga pascal and inside this there is a softer spongy cancellous or trabecular with a compressive strength of around 5 to 20 mega pascal and young's modulus in the range of 0.02 to 1.7 giga pascal that is much softer so naturally available composites are there and these are of course with certain objectives why this is like this because it has to take a typical kind of load you know so again there is say an example is wood if you take the cross section of a tree you can see the spirally owned cellulose fibers bonded together with lignin matrix this is formed during the growth of the tree and you know the directional strength of the wood you know so because of this uh, because it's a composite material they are having direction dependent strength and stiffnesses so even though composite material the the uh, the idea of composite material has been uh, um, uh, uh, new maybe it has started from uh, 20th century but uh, it has been there i mean the composite materials have have, uh, have been there uh, much longer the traces have been there even in bc and there are naturally available composites also now uh, in the definition we we discussed that two or more materials are actually combined macroscopically in order to have certain improved qualities or properties now what are those improved properties say from the structural point of view okay for load bearing member many a times we want the the strength to be very high we want the the component to be stronger maybe it has to uh, withstand a very high load okay then we want this to be stiffer so that we need we may need to improve the stiffness okay then depending upon uh, if a particular component is actually in a in a corrosive environment it must have adequate corrosive resistance okay then in case of components which are in intimate, intimate contact okay say for gear teeth okay so wear resistance is also important therefore then there are high temperature applications where the uh, the we want the the component to be uh, or the material to having a very high resistance to temperature then many of the many structural components are actually subjected to fluctuating load and stress and therefore it is important that the fatigue life is improved okay similarly thermal properties like coefficient of thermal expansion thermal conductivity so there are many such properties which needs to be improved but make sure that uh, it is not possible to increase all the properties in a single composite and more importantly neither it is required okay it is not required for a particular application we may need one or two or three properties which needs to be enhanced and accordingly we decide what should be the composite material for some other applications we may decide for a certain specific uh, uh, i mean properties we may go for design of a different i mean look for a different composite materials now uh, let us talk about some of the typical uh, reinforcements okay so there are as uh, as we have discussed that there are uh, different types of reinforcement it could be fibers it could be uh, particles so say for example in this table we have shown say uh, graphite fiber okay so as we have uh, understood that the reinforcements are far stronger and stiffer comp uh, i mean comp usually compared to the uh, matrix say for example in this table if you look at it the graphite fibers has a uh, young's modulus of 230 giga pascal and if we compare this with steel which is having a uh, young's modulus of the of the order of 200 giga pascal so they are more or less i mean same order okay they while the young's modulus of the graphite fiber and the steel is almost same 
but if you look at the strength ultimate tensile strength of graphite fiber is almost you know 3 times that of the steel if you look at this table uh, the strength of graphite fiber is 2000 mega pascal whereas the, the, that of a typical steel is 640 mega pascal so it is almost 3 times so it is 3 times stronger okay similarly this shows unidirectional graphite epoxy we will have we will discuss this in detail so when we come to the uh, fiber reinforced composite but here what it means is graphite fibers are actually mixed with polymer matrix to give graphite epoxy so this is the composite actually this is only the reinforcement okay and this is the composite so at a certain percentage the graphite fibers are mixed with polymer composites and that also gives to gives rise to an young's modulus which is comparable to that of steel 180 gigapascal but strength is almost 2.5 times that of steel so it is still much stronger now the natural question comes if the reinforcement like the graphite fiber in this case is so, such uh, it's so strong and stiff okay then why it has to be uh, mixed with matrix we can use we can use this material in the bulk form but this is not done because most of these reinforcements are actually in bulk form are uh, not that strong you know and they are mostly they are brittle okay and leading to catastrophic failure that means they fail without any warning but more importantly if you take say a uh, glass fiber it has a certain ultimate strength but if you take a glass panel the strength of the glass panel will be much much lower compared to the glass fiber the reason is uh, the materials in the bulk form are much weaker because of the presence of flaws there will be inherent flaws i think the, that all of you have done that griffith's theory if you have done in material science okay the presence of a flaws actually reduce the reduces the strength okay so uh, the material in its bulk form will uh, will have more chances of having flaws in it second thing is that in its fiber form because the fiber dimensions is of the order of in the order of microns even if there are flaws the size of the flaw will be much less compared to the flaws in the you know uh, uh, in the bulk form so there is which is called size effect actually in size effect if you see this is the size of the flaw flaw size and this is the strength it is something like this not to scale so as the flaw size you know increases the strength actually decreases so this is why actually it these fibers which are very very strong and stiff are actually mixed with uh, the fibers alone cannot make a you know structural component and they are mixed with the uh, uh, matrix to make the composites now another important thing is if you notice in this table that uh, even though the young's modulus of graphite fiber or for say example the young's modulus of the composite graphite epoxy composites that means graphite fibers mixed with uh, you know polymer matrix that the young's modulus of the steel and this is almost comparable but then if you look at the density the density of graphite fiber is actually almost four times uh, more than four times less than that of steel okay uh, and uh, the density of the graphite epoxy composites that means polymer matrix composite with graphite fibers is also much less you know almost uh, uh, 4.6 times that of the steel okay this leads to that that we define uh, this leads to the definition of you know uh, specific modulus what is specific modulus e by rho that is young's modulus divided by density so if you see that even though the young's modulus of the steel and this composite is almost comparable but the specific modulus of the graphite epoxy is almost uh, you know five times more than that of the steel okay similarly if you look at the strength the strength of uh, this composite is anyway almost uh, 2.5 times that of steel and when it comes to specific strength it is almost roughly 10 times that of the uh, steel now what does it mean it translates to higher the values of specific modulus lower will be the weight for the same stiffness 
That means, suppose we have two components, one is made of steel, another is made of graphite epoxy, okay. then they are, uh, uh, I mean, if, if we want to have the same stiffness in both of them, then what will happen is the weight of the graphite epoxy will be almost 5 times less than that of the steel. Say for example, we can take this example here, what this, suppose we have a bar and say it is, we are taking a most simple example, a bar subjected to axial load P, suppose the length of the bar is L, uniform cross section suppose, uniform cross section say the area of cross section is A, we know that the deflection under axial load is P L by A E. Okay? So, we can write this as delta is equal to P L square A into L into E. Now, A into L is nothing but the volume of the bar therefore, this is P L square V if M is the mass and rho is the density of the material of the bar then this is M by rho we can write the volume into E therefore, we can write delta is equal to P L square by M into E by rho. This E by rho is nothing but the specific modulus. Therefore, we can write mass M is equal to P L square by delta Therefore, if E by rho is twice suppose, then mass will be half for the same stiffness, for the same deflection. Okay? Therefore, as E by rho increases, the mass decreases. It has a tremendous implication, uh, especially in the transport sector, you know, in uh, where uh, it is used in the transport. Say for example, say in an aircraft, in aerospace, in an, in an aircraft, say uh, typically, the mass of uh, say a big aircraft like a, like Airbus A320 is around 40,000 kg. Okay. Suppose in an aircraft by some means by using by changing the materials, if you can reduce the mass by 10 percent, reduce the weight by 10 percent, I mean it is not that easy, but say just I am giving an example. Suppose the mass is 40,000 kg and uh, by choosing some lighter materials, if you make it say reduce the mass by 10, 10 percent say 4,000. That means what happens is this 4000 is the gain in the payload that means since you have reduced the mass by 4000 kg you can actually add 4000 kg more in the aircraft so it has a tremendous economic implication as fuel savings and you know say for example that means you can actually put 4000 kg of defined materials in the aircraft and 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 uh, the, the the payload is actually increased by 4000 kg so it has a tremendous economic implication the same is true for even for uh, I mean the uh, launching the satellites in rocket. Okay, if the if the payload could be increased, that means that is the savings in the you know uh, that is a direct savings in the uh, uh, in the economy. Okay, uh, of the of the of the whole program. So this is what is uh, exactly uh, the implication of higher uh, specific modulus. Therefore, in comp in uh, uh, I mean a comparison is made with the specific modulus not with the modulus. In case of composite, the higher the specific modulus, the lighter will be the material. Similarly, the specific strength, the higher the specific strength for the same, same strength, lighter will be the component. Okay? Now, it may not be always E by rho. I have just taken an example of uh, uh, axial loading, there it is e, e by rho, but it uh, say for example, in case of buckling, it is actually root E by rho, because in buckling, it is the critical buckling load okay, which actually decides that what is the limiting condition and from there I am not showing it here. We can show that if e, e to the power half by rho is maximum that will lead to minimizing the mass. Similarly, if you take a uh, panel, uh, this is for buckling. Similarly, if you take a panel subjected to 
transverse load, a plate subjected to say transverse load. So, it is actually cube root of E by rho which decides that for the same deflection the mass will be minimum. So, uh, uh, all of you might, might have studied in machine design I have just repeating it here this ash by plot you know this is this side is density and this side is Young's modulus and you can see different types of materials right from very low density to very low strength to high density high strength. So, metals figure somewhere here you can see the composite as far as the strength goes it is almost in the same place with metals, but the density is much lower in the scale. Okay. Similarly, the ceramics the so polymer is in between. Okay. So, this plot is very very useful in, in selecting the material. Okay. We can find out for a given E by rho we can have a constant E by rho line here. Maybe you can have a constant E by rho line here. We can have a constant root E by rho line here and decide what material to be selected based on our functional requirement. Okay. So, now having understood the definition of composite all this what we have been doing was to understand the definition of composite what exactly is composite when we say composite and what we actually achieve through a composite. Okay. Now, there are advantages and limitations also. Now, advantage already we have discussed it has higher specific strength why it has higher specific strength because the reinforcements are far stronger say for example, in a fibers fibrous comp in a fiber composites the fibers are far stronger, but because they are stronger okay, the strength of fibers are actually the variability is much more compared to the conventional materials. Okay. So, and because of the variability of fiber strength, so the overall strength variability is more. So, that is a disadvantage okay. and low fracture toughness the fibers actually behave like brittle material and therefore, they have low fracture toughness, but when it is mixed with matrix like polymer matrix uh, the ductility of the matrix actually uh, enhances the fracture toughness sometimes by dissipation of energy. Okay. Then it has higher specific modulus okay, uh, that we have just discussed that means, E by rho is far higher compared to conventional material ma materials that leads to weight savings in, in, in the applications where weight minimization is very very important. Then one important uh, besides all this there is an important uh, uh, I mean advantage is tailor making capabilities that means, we can actually uh, tailor make the properties as per our requirement. How? Say for example, what do you mean by tailor make? Here the anisotropy is used advantageously the term anisotropy we will discuss in details later on. Uh, the fibers are actually anisotropic that means, the properties are actually direction, direction dependent that means, if you take a typical fiber you know it is longitudinal that means, along its axis the strength and stiffness suppose this is direction 1. So, along its axis the strength and stiffness is far higher compared to that in the transverse direction u 1 is much greater than e 2 strength in direction 1 is also greater than strength in direction 2. So, this is an isotropy. Okay and this is used advantageously. Suppose, we want uh, a, a component which is supposed to take axial load. Therefore, we will choose uh, a fiber uh, fiber reinforced uh, polymer composites where the fibers are in the direction of the load and it can serve, but we, we do not require suppose the stiffness or strength in the other direction so high. Suppose, we want our desired E 1 by E 2 is say is equal to 10. So, we can actually uh, tailor make that by choosing the, uh, the reinforcement and the matrix and the relative proportion that is very very important. Okay. So, another important aspect is in the example of tailor making is so sometimes in, uh, uh, in space applications there are components may actually experience a temperature uh, range suppose anything between minus 90 to plus 100, 150. Okay. In that gamut of temperature you know. Uh, if you just uh, go by the coefficient of thermal expansion the shape distortion will be there, because if the temperature variation is so high depending on the coefficient of thermal expansion alpha there will be you know uh, the dimension stability will not be there, but with composites it is possible 
that uh, to choose the reinforcement and the matrix in such a way that some of uh, maybe the coefficient of thermal expansion in a particular direction suppose coefficient of thermal expansion along in a particular direction may be made almost zero and thereby thereby actually reducing the dimensional instability okay these are advantages but anisotropy also has limitations because it is anisotropic okay the analysis is more involved compared to the isotropic materials like analysis of a uh, component made of steel is much simpler compared to analysis of a composite which is made of an isotropic fibers and isotropic matrix okay then mechanical characterization is difficult okay what do you mean by mechanical characterization suppose for example if you actually want to uh, characterize a, a material suppose uh, uh, a steel what we do we make a sample take it to the universal testing machine load it we can from one single test we can find out what is its young's modulus what is position ratio and what is its uh, uh, you know uh, and of course the residual modulus is a function of young's modulus and position ratio but it is not that straight forward in the case of uh, uh, composites because it is an isotropic that means in case of a uh, uh, in case of a component made of composites i mean we have to find out young's modulus along this direction young's modulus in this direction maybe young's modulus in the other direction similarly so the mechanical mechanical characterization is not that straight forward and it is also difficult we will have a detailed discussion on this when you do the mechanics because there are inherent coupling also which makes it further difficult the mechanical characterization then there is high cost of fabrications okay the the manufacturing method is entirely different compared to that of uh, you know conventional metallic materials and the cost of manufacturing is still higher but with mass production it is coming down and repair is not that simple like uh, in case of conventional metallic materials we can do welding okay we can do repairing it may not be uh, uh, if there is a flaw it may not be that straight forward to repair a component so these are some of the limitations you know these are some of the limitations these are the advantages applications i mean why we are actually studying this course there are huge applications of uh, composite metal especially the fiber reinforced polymer composite materials if you look at aerospace structures you know the wings fuse lug radom antenna helicopter and so on so many things are actually made of you know composite materials and therefore there are huge weight savings in this uh, aerospace structures then automobiles body panels bumpers leaf springs there are many such components boats are also made of fiber glass fibers you know in chemical industries pipes tanks pressure vessels okay in sports rackets diving boards helmets you know then uh, hockey sticks many uh, uh, components of the sports equipments are actually made of composite materials so uh, in 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 summary today what we have done is that we understood what is composite it consists of two or more materials reinforcement and matrix they are actually mixed in macroscopic scale with an objective of improved properties or desirable properties and that property is markedly improved compared to that of the constituents even though the composite materials have been there for maybe for last 6 uh, or 7 decades but uh, the traces have been there since long time even there are naturally available composites like wood bone etc even synthetic composites were there in use for more than 1000 years there have been traces in uh, earlier civilizations however the major development of composites have come in last 50 60 years and these are extensively used for aerospace and automobile applications okay nowadays of course there are even uh, uh, daily use materials also made of composites so uh, we understood what is composites and uh, wh what is the need for composites so in the next class we'll try that uh, we'll discuss the detailed classification of composites and fiber reinforced composites in in particular and important terminologies so thank you